Um, that's, that's what happens when you're reading the sigma notation and you're going to the series, right? But you can just as easily go in the opposite direction, can't you, okay? If I handed you this and I said, here is a partial sum of a sequence, right? You can see that, um, is, this, is this an AP or a GP? It's now, AP. remember, I told AP. you, right? For all of the sequences that we've learned, there were two important families that we are focusing on, right? We're going to keep doing that. But just because there are two families, that doesn't mean that's everything, right? Yeah, there's all kinds of things out there, right? So this is neither an AP nor a GP, because if you have a look at the differences, there's no common difference, right? And um, if you have a look at the common ratio, well, there isn't a common ratio, okay? So this is not an AP or a GP, but the, the denominators are an AP, and that's where the pattern is forming, right? So if I wanted to rewrite this as sigma notation, okay? How could I do this, right? Well, first I'll just, I'll just write my sigma, okay? Now remember, I need a starting point, don't I? I need a starting point. I can start anywhere I like. So what would you like to suggest as a nice common place place to start? Okay. How about n equals 1? Zero. I think that's fairly, fairly standard to start from. I can start from another value. In fact, in a second, I will start from another value and I'll show you what happens. But for now, let's just go with this. Now, the reason, one of the reasons why n equals 1 is a great value to start with is that if there are 1, 2, 3, 4 terms, I automatically know what the last term will be. It's going to be term number 4, right? So, first term, second term, third term, fourth term is where I'm going to end. Okay, now is the tricky part. What's going to be over here? What's, what's it going to look like, right? Let's do the easy part first. What stays the same in every single of the terms? Yeah, good. It's going to be 1 over something. So that's the easy part, okay? So now I need to determine my denominator. Now, remembering that each of these terms here forms an AP, just turn back, if you've still got it there, um, to where we drew our table up, and we said, what's the formula for every term in an AP? Right, what's the formula? Or like a plus. Generally speaking, right, you started with your first term and then you added n minus one lots of whatever that common different one common difference was. Okay? Now I could use this here pretty easily, couldn't I? I could use this. So what's the first term of my denominators? That's all I'm focusing on. Five. Five. Five plus n minus one. And what's the common difference? Two. It's two. two. Okay. Times two, okay, and this is really easy to simplify out. Five plus two n minus two. Yep. Two n plus three. Are you happy with that? Does it work? N equals one. Two plus three, five. N equals two. Four plus three, seven. It works. Okay. Now I could have done that intuitively without appealing to the formula. I could have said there's a common difference of two. So whatever the common difference is is going to be my coefficient of my double dummy variable, just like this is seven, right? So I could have said, all right, I'm clearly going to get a two n something, and then I would think, well, what constant will make me start at five rather than at two? And the answer is like, I've got to go up three, right? So I could have intuited it if I wanted to, but I might as well use the formula because I have it, right? Okay, so that's that. Now, how would this, um, just really quickly, how would this change if I wanted to be awkward and didn't want to start at one? Suppose if you're like, meh, you know, I'm gonna be a bit of a hipster. Let's just start at, let's start at three, why not, okay? Now, let me go through this process again. If I started at three and I have, count them, one, two, three, four terms, what will be my last term? Six, one, eleven. Hang on, term seven, three, six, term four, six, term seven, five, six, six, term six, six right? All Look, four terms when I did five take away one, that's four, but there are five terms. When I did four take away two, that's two, but there are three terms. Just watch these off by one errors. They creep up us, on us a lot, especially when you're working out a partial sum. They'll say, I want this number of terms, and if you go plus one or minus one, it changes the sum, doesn't it? I'm going to end at n equals six, so three is six. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to have 1 over something, right? Good morning. What will be different this time? <laughs> now, this, this denominator is still the same. Let me suggest I'm starting in a different spot, right? At n equals one, 3 rather than n equals 1. 
but this is still an AP, and the comma difference is still two. Do you agree with that? It still same? an AP. Yeah. Still common difference two, right? So I'm still going to have a two end here. Good morning. Okay. Ah, uh, but here comes the difference, right? If I now think about, all right, well, what will my first term be? My first term. Oh, when I put in n equals three, which is my first term of this partial sum, right? Uh, it'll be six, but I don't want six on the denominator. I want five, don't I? Right, so how will I adjust six to turn it into five? Minus well, five take one. away one. Right. Now just pause for a minute. Does it work? Is the pattern going to make sense? Well, when I put in n equals four, which is the next term, I've got two times four, which is eight. Take away one, which is seven. Thumbs up. Okay. Now what have I just done? Um, these two things, they have the same value. I, I have no idea what that fraction is equal to. But whichever way we take it, they're going to be equal to the same thing. But this is two different partial sum expressions, right? Because this is saying, all right, I have a sequence and it looks like, it looks like this. Uh, 1 over 5, 1 over 7, 1 over 9, 1 over 11. Clearly it keeps going. What would the next term be? 1 over 13, and 1 over 15, and on and on and on. Okay. Now, when you have a look at this guy, right, this is still the same numbers that I want, except I'm starting at the third term. Right? So this is the first term. But over here, that 1 fifth is the third term. So there were two terms preceding this sequence, right? There's a term 1 and term 2 that I'm inverted commas. Missing, right? What would the um, what would the first two terms be? One, one, if I just go backwards, third, if I just backtrack, it would be a third, one, one. and um, and one, one over one, 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 right? So do you see what this guy is doing? Is saying, okay, my sequence starts here. Give me the first four terms. There it is, right? Whereas this guy is saying, okay, my sequence starts over here, but I want you to give me the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth terms, right? So here, T3, T4, do you get what I'm doing here? Okay, so it's just whichever series you want to start with.